Obviously, I'm not sending this bike stand back, so we're gonna sacrifice this one for the purpose of testing. All right, party people, welcome back. So let's see, is the light going to change crazy? Yes, I am pretty much whited out right now. But anyhow, so today I'm trying to find a solution for a mobile bike repair stand. Uh, currently I have this Park PCS 10 and I carry it around my van and then when I need to use it in the garage, I'll take it in the garage. And it takes up quite a bit of space. As you can see, it is, uh, mounted lengthwise here in the garage of the van so if i could recoup some of that space for other things that would be awesome and so i figured maybe i would look for something that i could either mount to the frame of the van or somewhere on the the rear doors and that would give me the capability to recoup some of the space and uh, be a little bit better of a mobile solution versus having to lug that bike stand out whenever i need to use it so that's what this video is about today so i'd always seen this uh conquer wall mount bike repair stand on amazon it's like 35 bucks so i figured you know what it's 35 bucks let's buy it put it through the test see if it works and maybe it'll help you make a purchasing decision as well depending on how you use the bike repair stand so um, let's go over what we got here and then we'll put it through the test all right so this is pretty much what comes in the box you've got the base here you've got the uh looks like the head here twist and it's got these teeth that's made out of a hard plastic the base is made out of a hard plastic and it has uh, some hex tighteners in it I don't see any keying or grooves in here on the base end and I don't see any keying or grooves here where the pipe fits in so that that's going to be interesting now on the other end there is a key it's keyed out here so the jaws and i don't know if you'll be able to see this but up inside is a key oh, is plastic keyed here um, to keep this from twisting about and a very basic clamping mechanism there with a wing nut and it has this kind of rubbery coverings on the end here which helps from marring on your bicycle frame or seat post or wherever you clamp it it also came with these two mounts which i thought was pretty cool because i could mount one of these in the van and then i could mount the other one in the garage this base just slides down into the uh the mount point here this is interesting clamp mechanism because you actually have to hold the wing nut back here in order to tighten this up um, if you don't, it just freely spins. So you can see that. You know, I think the idea here is that you're going to have it set to a set point, and when you clamp down, you're just going to clamp over the locking mechanism. But I don't know about you. I've got several different bikes I'm going to put in here, and the, the top tubes are always a different thickness, and the seat posts are different thickness. Some have dropper posts, some don't. So it seems fairly uh, a fairly stout mechanism, but I wish that this wing nut here would be more like a a nut that was either built into the plastic or recessed and captured by the plastic so it wouldn't spin freely when you try to tighten it down otherwise you've got to you've got to put some pressure on that to keep it from turning so all right so let's just start putting this thing together i'm going to grab a couple of tools here it looks like we're going to need probably a number six and a number five hex keys and uh, we'll start with the jaws here it's pretty simple it's just a keyed mechanism here and i'm just going to slide this right in with the key facing the slot and that keeps the head from twisting there and it looks like we've got a number five hex so i'm just going to tighten this down and again this is that plastic and pretty much once you get it to the point where the two plastic points meet there you probably should start stop torquing down on it otherwise it's probably going to crack something there so interesting to see how it does when it gets some weight on it and for the other end here i'm going to put the base on again the base is not keyed whatsoever so it's basically a round tube that has no grip on it 
and some hard plastic inner piece here and it is free to rotate about so that's going to be interesting so i'm going to lock it into this position so i've made a temporary uh, fixture for this to actually mount in the garage and so i'm just going to put this in my vise mechanism here and just slide it down in the slot there so I don't know if you can tell here but I've got I've got this bolt tightened down pretty hard so that's what it looks like close up and you can see the the two pieces of uh, plastic here pretty much together from tightening that so that is about as tight as it's going to get before something cracks i would think so counterclockwise loosens the head clockwise tightens the head and the head has uh these little notched teeth here and this kind of uh it's almost like a, a hard plastic rubberish type of uh connection point so i feel pretty confident that this will not spin given the weight of bike we're going to put on it but the part that I'm really worried about is this interface here because it's basically hard plastic on metal and there's really no key in to keep it from rotating like that. And when we put some forces on this head and we start to turn the bike off center uh, of gravity. All right, let's put some weight in the stand. Um, got my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson here. And you can go back in my videos and watch the actual video of when I purchased this bike last year, July of 2019 or 2018. It's a 2019 model. Uh, I think I weighed this bike at just over 31 pounds. So uh, this is a proper kind of trail slash enduro bike. Uh, 160 travel in the front, 150 in the back. This would be representative of a standard adult mountain bike as far as weight's concerned, pretty much. So it's not on the heavy end, it's, it's definitely not on the light end. First of all, I'm gonna clamp it by the top tube here. All right, so there's the bike centered up. And this would be a normal configuration that you would use a bike repair stand, especially if you're working on the rear. It's definitely a little bit less stable than I'm used to uh, with the park tool stand. Now, one of the things that I usually do is I usually clamp to the seat post. So I'm going to move the clamp to the seat post here and we'll see how this behaves because that's going to get this way off center of, uh, of balance of the bike and uh, we'll see how this, this part behaves. We'll spin her around. Yeah, well, this is typically how I clamp most of my bikes now because of the carbon fiber frames. I, I typically don't want to mar up the carbon fiber or, or bite into it at all. So typically we'll go uh, in the seat tube. I'm just going to tighten this one up just a little bit. All right, so let's do a little test now where we spin this around. So we might want to get the... All right, so I don't know if you guys picked that up or not, but the whole tube here inside this plastic just rotated counterclockwise by about 15 or 20 degrees and so as soon as I put some weight off centered then we get this twisting motion here because we have such a slick surface here and there's really nothing in the plastic there to bite to and for me this is a very important point because like I said I do like to clamp on the seat post which puts a little bit more weight and rotational torque toward the front. Now, one of the things you could do is you could actually key it at the base up here. You could actually go through and put a, put a, uh, a pin through the plastic and the metal. My guess is it wouldn't be too much longer before the plastic would actually split though. So I'm gonna remove the bike from the stand and place it out of the way here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drill a hole through the plastic and this metal tubing 
and I'm going to fit a pin through it, which would keep this particular interface here from rotating about itself. Obviously, I'm not sending this bike stand back, and so we're going to sacrifice this one for the purpose of testing. And by the way, it is super hot in North Carolina today, and it has been in the last week, and I'm out in the garage, and there's no air flowing through here, so it's been super humid. I'm just going to use this Allen key. I don't have a pin the, the right size, so I'm just going to push this through. I drilled my hole and we pushed this Allen key through, and that should keep this from rotating. So I'm going to put the bike back on the stand, and let's see if that helps us out any. All right. Okay, so we're back in our clamp, and we have our, our pin. So now we have something to keep the interface here from the base from rotating under force so let's uh see if i can move the camera back just a little bit so you can see our bike's clamped here what i'm gonna do is the test again where i'm gonna actually torque the bike up and so you can already see actually it is still moved it looks like it's just wallowing out the plastic and the metal there if you're just going to hang the bike on the center of balance then it would probably work okay and you're, you're it's 35 dollars well spent or if you had kids bikes that weighed you know 10 pounds 15 pounds uh, i think in that scenario it would probably work out but in a scenario where you have a 31 plus pound bike uh, like this for example and you clamp anywhere other than the balance point of the bike then you start to see the weak points of this stand, which is un understandable. I'm not knocking this stand because it's a $35 stand, right? Um, but I think if you're gonna look at it for repairs on an ongoing basis and something that will last, this probably wouldn't be the first stand that I would choose. I'd probably spend a little bit more money and find another solution. So I think, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a, it's a $35 stand, but is it stable enough to actually hold a bike to the degree that I want it to hold? No. Is it a good stand for somebody? Probably so. Like I said, if you're going to use it on a light bike and if you clamp on the top tube. I was so hoping this would be a good solution for me because they do give you these two base plates here. And uh, I could definitely you know, install this in the van and then actually take this stand in between. And it would be... A great solution but I don't think it's actually sturdy enough for me to actually use the solutions even with the keying there hopefully some of this information will help you make a purchase decision on whether this particular Conquer wall mount repair stand will actually work for you and your bike all right that'll do it for this video if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please do so and click that bell beside the channel subscribe button that gets you notified of all my new uploads and until next time skill up and ride and up and go